everybody, welcome to another episode of Let's Play. Today I'm joined by Owen from Game with the Cooler to check out Ark World 2nd Edition. Now this is a uh, one-man sculpting, game writing, um, sort of like outfit out of the UK uh, who's come up with a very cool uh, sort of like high fantasy skirmish, um, which is, and it's currently working toward the 2nd Edition. So this is the 2nd Edition of the game I'm showing off today, doing a whole new line of models. These are all actually sculpted by Alex Huntley, the um, primary designer and artist, and they're done Traditionally, they're done through putty pushing, which I think is super cool um, in white metal. So I got two faction starters here to try. I've got the Wild Elves and the Halfling Militia. Um, and I've painted them up in some sort of fanciful colors. And we're gonna throw down a uh, sort of like an introductory mission here where a terrible troll is rampaging towards a village and the two forces basically are trying to uh, remove all the Arcanite. It's like a crystallized magic-y thing um, from the area uh, as fast as they can before it arrives and starts just like wreaking havoc and destroying everything. So I'm gonna give you a basic overview of the rules. It uses a sort of interesting like a posed dice mechanic where most attacks um, generate like an action pool. Uh, there's a universal success ratio, a four, five, or six is a success, and a six is a critical, does doubles. Critical is gonna unlock special effects for actions um, or attacks, and then um, you're basically trying to defend against it, usually with a single die that you can roll infinitely until you fail. So. It's, a, it's an interesting mechanic. Uh, there's lots of like crunchy list building. Most characters in the list can be equipped with basically like a huge melange of weapons. So the Halfling Militia have like a ton of options, shields, torches, uh, ranged weapons, light and heavy armor, you know, all kinds of fun stuff. Uh, and the elves as well, sacrificial daggers, throwing spears, like the whole nine yards. Uh, you can recruit monsters in your warband, but the monster today is gonna be unaligned. And we're playing about 500 gold pieces, which is a pretty standard game size um, out of the starter set. So I'm gonna show you the table, we'll show you the, the core mechanics of the game, we'll get this underway. So here's pretty much everything you need to play Arc World 2nd Edition. Uh, I've got here the uh, printer-friendly version of the core rules. Uh, I have my warband selection here, and it's actually not just the warbands you see in front of you. There's like Norse and dark, sort of like evil chaos -y types, undead, some bayou orcs, gremlins, the whole nine yards. And then you need two warbands. Um, and what I have is I have my halfling warband here, uh, and of course my wild elf warband. So I painted these guys up. They're super fun and chunky. Um, I really enjoyed the uh, the big details and just sort of like relaxing and painting them. This is Swizgar Squig Elf and Toki Wartooth, my two wild elves. And then the rest of them are actually summonables. Um, the Wood Fiends and Lycan Hawk are sort of like magical creatures that can come onto the table pretty much at a whim. And when what's cool thing is they're, they're fairly easy to kill when they're destroyed. The elves just kind of like bring them back over and over again. And then over here we have Welby Shortwick, and this is the uh, the luncheon guard of Greens Road, my little halfling militia. Now Welby himself, he's heavily armored. He's got a whole bunch of like extra bits and pieces. And we have Fang, the uh, the pup there. He's my um, my troll hound who's hanging out with the, the luncheon guard. Now everything's fairly crunchy as far as like list building. Uh, the like the two Star Wars bands were more than enough to do 500 point games. They recommend 300 for a beginner game, but we kind of just like dove in. And you can see here you have all your faction specific rules. So like when I'm building out the list for the Wild Elves. Um, they have the ability to summon, so all the elves are summoners, all of the little sort of like monstrous creatures are summonable, and you pay for, you have to have a commander, and other than that you have to have units and beasts, so I have one commander, I have an elite, which is a wild elven warrior, and then two wood fiends and a beast, and if you look they add up to about 125, 225, 365, and I was able to buy a bunch of equipment on top of it, so my war chief has a ranged weapon, he has a throwing spear, and also dual weapons, because I figured the spear is kind of like a, a fighting staff, which would represent that. And that gives him a 16 inch range thrown power attack. He can like, he can fire his range weapon basically uh, by throwing the spear. And then the dual weapons on reroll ones when he's making melee attacks. He's got a heavy ward. You can see they're, they're into like blood magic and sacrifice and stuff. So I did some like blood kind of like daubs of war paint on them. And that means he's minus one movement. He also has like a big metal sort of like shoulder plate, um, but he's plus two armor when making, when being attacked. And then both my elves have healing gems, which allow them to do a simple feat um, to heal d6 damage like once per round. Uh, the Wild Elf Warrior has a sacrificial blade. It lets him reroll his sacrifice. So he can actually, if anyone's at um, low health, basically two or less hit points in base to base with him, he can sacrifice them to like gain bonuses <laughs> and do summons and stuff. And he's got like RFP basically, he has to reroll the test, it's a feat. And he's got a light warning for plus one armor, but no movement reduction, and his healing gem. And then the two wood fiends and lycanhawks, they, they're just like, the lycanhawks a beast, and then the wood fiends are um, units, but because they're summonable, they can't use gear. Like, they're just assumed to, like, coalesce out of the ground, so I'd have to bother buying them anything. So it's a total of, I think, 495 
Now for this warband, and over here the Luncheon Guard, uh, we got Shelby. He has heavy armor and a shield. You can see here the uh, the Luncheon Guard's symbol is a uh, you know a nice uh, knife and fork. Uh, he's got two sort of like militiamen, also with shields and light armor. Shelby himself has heavy armor, which means that he has to uh, suffer a minus one to leg it rolls, which means he's bad at running. Uh, and there's two guards with torches and two of the ranged weapons, and then the Fang the uh, the trollhound there, which makes up 495 for that. Uh, that group as well. And I do like that there's some like crunchy like pen and paper writing things down. Uh, I did also write the base core stats down because the, the stats are fairly simple. There's only four of them. AP, how many AP do uh, you have per turn? Your movement stat, which is how far you move for free each round before you start having to use AP to move. Uh, your bravery, which is trying to roll equal to or under when you fight something that's fearsome and you're just your hit points. So there's, there's not a lot of, there's only four stats to remember. They're fairly simple to memorize. And that's just your unique actions, which are like your attacks and stuff. So, for instance, my Wild Up War Chief, he can spend two AP during his activation to do a Whirlwind. Um, it rolls seven dice pool, basically. Uh, every four or five is a hit, and every uh, six is two hits, and counts as a critical. And the criticals allow one more D60 roll. So he's exploding sixes on top of his normal sixes. So he's a pretty cool killing machine. Uh, he also has Deadly Strike which ignores an armor, so it gets less dice, but it reduces the armor of the target. Blood range, which is power 10. Uh, this attack might be made if the war chief cause the enemy to be knocked out. So like if he kills somebody, he freaks out and does like a super attack. And then he has agile summoner and sacrifice. So summoner is the one where he can do a, um, an easy feat, which requires one success to basically make a uh, uh, one of these guys, any of these summonable models appear within six. And then medium, he has to get two successes to appear within 12. And it also immediately ends my activation. Right. It doesn't have my activation. It, it can activate as soon as I activate, so it can chain activate, which is cool. Uh, you've also got uh, Sacrifice. Once per activation, a character with this ability can choose any character in base contact. Uh, if it's a 25% less of its AP, roll a d6. If successful, it's knocked out, I receive an Arcanite token. So I get one of these like magical coalesced pieces of, um, of magic. And I have some extra ones over here, because you only need six for the objectives for the mission. Uh, and then Agile, uh, sorry, I already said Agile. Agile is the one where he can re-roll a single failed legate roll. That we'll get to when we get to the core mechanics. The Hobbits, let's just say the Halflings, um, they have a similar rule. They're also Agile, but they have make and take orders. Basically, they can do group activation. So they make up by being individually weaker, typically. So like AP 4, Movement 4, Bravery 8, and only 10 hit points on their boss. Like he's way weaker than my Wild Elf Chieftain is. So Shelby's not as tough. Um, but he's got light armor and make orders. So he comes with light armor basically out of the gate, like built in. And he has make orders where he can give the orders to people for AP. People can activate afterwards, but it ends his activation. And the militia have take orders, a special rule. And they're also fairly good stabbers. He has a heavy stab for ignoring armor. And then a furious wallop where if he rolls crits, restarts AP by one because it like breaks them. <laughs> and then the troll hound, uh, Fang, he has. Um, Pack Hunter and Agile. Uh, so Agile reroll the Legate rolls. And then Pack Hunter means that um, he gets to do group activations and stuff. Killing on, successfully uh, attacking is made on a monster. The troll hunted base contact with the monster suffers a bite every time it's activated. So if he if he basically crits, so if he successfully attacks, when the monster activates later on, he makes the attack for free every time it activates. Core rules are pretty simple. Six inch deployment zones. We're playing on a three by three table here. Um, and we're gonna play for a, uh, the mission is basically a, a run on Arcanite. So there's six pieces typically to place them. You're just gonna hold your hand over the board and drop them. And then any that are too close to the edge, you just kind of move around so they're relatively in the center of the board. Ooh, and try and kind of scatter them around. So setting up the game, now that our um, terrain's placed, you just want some sort of like pleasing terrain and our Arcanite's on the table. We're gonna dice off for who places their models first. Deployment zones are six inches on. Um, and then we also have to roll to see what turn the terrible troll comes in, the forest troll. So this wonderful model is um, basically asleep somewhere here on the table. And he's gonna arrive on a center random edge, like one to three, four to six left and right on a random turn. So on one to two, it's on turn one, three to four, it's turn two, and five to six is turn three. So one to two, he's gonna show up right away, basically at the end of the turn, or start of the turn, rather. Uh, and you wanna dice off to see which side? Uh, one to three oh. left, yep. So he's gonna be over here. So one of these trees was a troll. 
So this Troll of the Ambush Roach which means he comes into a piece of terrain, and then each round, basically, as we activate, he's a third player, an, an NPC player. He'll make his basic movement once towards the nearest thing he can see, and attempt to throw a boulder. If he can't throw a boulder, he's going to leg it, and he's going to keep activating, basically, and spending AP um, every time we go round, basically. So it'll go whoever's going first in the round, the other player, and then the troll. Um, he's got 8 AP to do stuff with, so we're going to use a D8 here to mark what his AP is currently at. It lasts for potentially four rounds, and after that we have to keep rolling a die, and if there's a success, we play another round, another round, another round. When the game does end, whoever's holding the most Arcanite will win. Uh, you can buy Arcanite, you can use Arcanite as well to, to make an AP if you need to, or to add a dice to a test. Things you might need are some knocked out and activated tokens, so I have some handy ones here from Kings of War Vanguard, um, although I do believe there's going to be some like punch ones available in the future. So we're going to dice off right now for deployments. And see who's placing first, and we'll walk you through rules as we go. So, yeah, I lost the roll, which means you can pick your edge, and start placing malls. Alright, we're deployed. I've got Squizgard up here with his uh, mighty spear, and then uh, Toki on the side with his, I don't know, heart that he tore out. <laughs> the troll's over here, and you've got the luncheon guard hanging out with Shelby Shortwick. Uh, he's there in the middle with his fancy hat. So, each round you will dice who goes first. I got a one, you got a three, so you have first activation. Now when you activate a model, um, at any point they can make their base movement, which is moving their base stat, doesn't cost any AP. And they can spend their AP on regular actions, so like the attacks on their cards, or feats. Now feat is a catch-all action, some things like using your healing potions or whatever will be a feat. Um, or picking up the Arcanite is an easy feat. And it just means how many AP you put into a feat is how many dice you get to roll, and the level, the difficulty of a feat is the level of success you need to pass. So an easy feat is one success, a medium feat is two successes, a hard feat is three, and like an impossibly heroic one is four. Uh, and that means that you would need one success to pick up the Arcanite if you wanted to try and do it. And this is, gives you kind of a D&D &D element to the game, where if you want to try and do feats during activation, you can. So things like, I could do like a jump off of here and maybe jump to the rooftop I want, but it would probably be like a heroic feat. So it's you, who wants to go first? All right, let's little torch bear go. He's gonna, gonna make his base move. Stuff. Cool. And He's now, does he want to leg it? it? So when you leg it, you roll a d6. If you roll a six, you fall over and your activation ends. Uh, but these guys have agile, so they can reroll the die. So a two. So he's gonna go two extra inches. Good enough. And that costs you one AP. So these are two AP halflings. You got one AP left. Try and pick it up. Try and go for it. Sure. Why not? Easy feat. Nope. nope. He fails, so he doesn't pick up the Arcanite. It's over to me. So now I get to talk to me and we go back and forth. So we're gonna start with Squizzard. Now because he's wearing a heavy warding, he only walks four. He's gonna walk over to here. It's an attempt to summon one of the, uh, the the little animals over here. They don't start in the board. So I'm going to do it as a, he has 5 AP. I just used my free movement. I'm going to use 2 to summon. I can place him within 6. He can activate later in the round. So I do get a double success, a critical, because they're all 6. I can place him within 6. I'm just going to place him in base to base the Arcanite over here. And I still have 3 AP remaining, so I'm going to summon another one. And fail. And I have 1 AP remaining, so I think I'm just going to do it again. And I do. And we're going to place it uh, over here, I think. So within six, yeah, we'll place them right there. All five of my AP, so my activation ends, and it's back to you. Now we've both gone, actually, the troll goes. So he makes his base move. And the troll's base move, I think, was five, or is it five? The closest thing you can see is most likely one of these guys with guns. So he's going to come legging it towards you, five. And I'm sure you deployed just far away enough, so he's not within 12 to throw his boulder. No, I do. Okay, he is. All right, so he's in bouldering range. So he has 8 AP. He's going to spend 2 right now to chuck a boulder. So his boulder attack takes him down to 6 because uh, it costs him 2 AP. And he has to roll to hit. Now, when you do a range attack, it's a little bit different from just doing a melee swing. First, you have to roll to hit somebody, which means he rolls a single D6 and looks for a success to land the target. Then he makes the attack roll to see how much damage he does. So on a 4, 5, or 6, he hits. He does. Power 10. Now, he only uses once per round, uh, but this is the same process you'd use to make a melee attack when you actually land a hit. So we'll use 10 dice here. Every 4, 5, or 6 is a success. 6 is count as double. So that's 2, 4, 5, 6, 7 successes. Now, you start making defense dice rolls. Now, when you do that, you keep rolling until you fail a 4+. plus. <laughs> so you would reduce the total by the number of successes you get on a defense roll. He got zero successes, which means he takes 7 damage, he only has 6 hit points, and he just gets squished by a boulder. This guy has what's called a split activation. It means that he will keep activating until he's out of HP, or uh, AP rather, um, and does not continue to do so when he's uncontrolled. So he's going to keep going, and he'll go after our next like combined activation. So it's back over to you. Mr. The Mr. The Dwarf or the Hobbit, he's gonna go five, five so he can go fast if he wants. Go yeah. grab the other Arcanite, that makes sense. That guy. With one his leg it, and he's got one dice to do it with. Nope, and he fails. It's an easy feat, not succeeded, and it's back to me. 
Well, I think we're gonna keep it pretty simple. Uh, we're gonna activate this little Briarling Wood Fiend. He'll spend his two AP to try and pick up this Arcanite. And he succeeds with a critical. So that becomes his, and then he's gonna use his base movement. Now he's pretty slow, he only goes three. So he's just gonna start heading this way away from the troll. Peace out. And he's done, that was my last AP. He's gonna leg it now from now on. Now every time he legs it though, it's a new activation, so it only ever really is gonna fail on a six. He can only do the boulder once per round, so he's gonna go towards the closest thing he can see. With the leg it, you wanna roll for it? He's coming for me. Okay, know. that's fair. <laughs> Five, towards the closest thing he can see. And now he's down one AP, which puts him in a five. He can't make any of his attacks, so he just stops. Back to you. This little guy is going to advance to the rear. And, <laughs> and shoot a crossbow. <laughs> Get him. Yeah. Hits him. Hits him, okay. So he hits him the crit. So now it's a uh, damage five, I think. Yep. Three. Three successes, a critical and one hit. So the de defense is for the troll. He has 20 hit points. He fails immediately and takes three damage. He's going to have 17 left. 17 health left, which is a d20 for that, and five AP. Uh, it's over to me. Well, this other little monster is going to go, the little wood fiend. He's going to walk over his three with his base movement. Stand next to the Arcanite, try and pick it up with his two AP. Needs a success, and he gets it. That one's going to belong to him. And then Mr. Trolley's going to go, so he's going to leg it again towards the dog. And he goes six Stays and down. fall down. When he falls down, he now has to spend an AP in his base movement to stand up. Actually, it ends his activation, so he loses all his remaining AP. So he's done. He fell over trying to go for you. Bloop. Who's gonna go? This was the moment we were waiting he's for. He's a troll hound. He's gonna go bite him. Five dice, one action bite. Uh, yeah. Two hits, and he rolls two dice, pick the lowest for defense. Two it's dice, the pick ground. the lowest. Okay, so first one. Double passes, second one, passes fail. So he fails and takes one damage. Your bite. Two more. Two more. Passes one, passes two, three. All right. Successfully attacked him, which means that now when he activates again, um, he will lose an, uh, take an automatic attack, actually. It's back to me. We're gonna go with uh, Toki Wartooth over here, and he's gonna make his base movement of five because he's not wearing heavy armor. And head over this way, I think. And he's gonna use a feat to try and climb up this. Do a jump, basically. It should be an easy feat. He's about like half the, half again as tall as that thing. So we'll use uh, two AP to do it and get a huge success. So we'll move our five and also jump. And that was two of my four AP. The last two AP I'm gonna use to summon a uh, hawk. And I do, and I place it within six. So the ghosty bird goes over here. And that's my activation number. Troll loses an AP to stand up. Down to two. Do we bite him before he stands? Uh, after? It's when he activates, it's right away. So we're gonna get him while he's down, yep. and he'll spend one. Yep. Five. Five, okay. And five. nothing, takes five, because then it's 11. It's one AP to pound you, down to two. It's a six dice attack. And if you are uh, taking any damage, you are also knocked prone. So if he does a critical hit, you're knocked prone. Uh, critical hits make the target prone if on a smaller base, and it's actually, it's after attacks been made, so it's not right away. So looking for fours, take six, seven, eight. First defense die, two, three, four, oh my god, four. four. So four damage, uh, and you're not prone. Not kill him. Two left, he's not prone. Well, he's done. Back to me, and it's just the bird. So the bird has a base movement of five, we can only take five I damage. Oh, that's right, you do have guys left, I'm so sorry. I thought you, know, I thought you grew activated. No. You're behind a tree. They're just gonna rally, I think. We'll send this guy this way. And then he'll leg it for two. Two. And then he'll leg it again for, for two. two more. He's coming that way. Going around that building. And that's him. That's the bird. And the bird's gonna go, and he's just gonna head up eight. Kinda change my mind here. Going this way. And then he's going to use a uh, leg it to go again and go one, so just an inch. And then he'll leg it one more time and he'll reroll out with Agile and go one more. Trolley time. Trolley's just going to hit you again. So he goes down to one AP and he's got six dice. Hit on fours. One, two, three, four, five. So five and you got to roll two pick the lowest. Oh, that's right. I'm down. You're dead. His activation's got one AP left. Back to you. And I'm all done. Mm-hmm. Well. It's Shelby Shortwick and your other shield man left. I guess this little fella is gonna lure the troll this way. 
He is half dead. He's going to be the closer one, wherever that may be. Learn backwards. A little bit like that. Yeah. Cool. All right, troll goes. All he can do is leg it towards you. Any falls It's not feeling great. <laughs> Starting his activation falling down. Shall we left? What's he want to do? Hell Slay no. the troll. Oh, he's trying. He's leg going it, little four. guy. Plus four. Three more. He's wearing pants. Oh, he's wearing That's right. He's minus nice one to leg it rolls. Because Second action. Second AP. Re roll that. Roll for for agile. Yeah. Agile. Three more. That's it. Two more, yeah. That's what you needed. And then his two more, or his last two, he's going to just wail on him. Do the wallop. Eight dice wallop. Eight dice wallop. All right, so this is big numbers. You could kill him here. I rolled two. Or you rolled two. <laughs> two picked the lowest because he's knocked down. Take two more. He takes two more. Now it looks like end of round, so all our activation markers come off. And we're into round two of potentially four. Dice and see goes first. I got a six. Nope. All right, it's gonna be me. Well, I think we're gonna start with the bird. He's just gonna do his. Uh, so now you count as fearsome to beasts, which is not good because I'm a beast. So yeah, I but think. But I'm not bigger than you, so it doesn't have to do anything. That's true. Yeah, you need to be bigger than me to actually scare me away. But you are good against flammable stuff. So I think what we're gonna do is we're just gonna fly into this guy, and do the diving attack. So my diving attack costs two AP. It's all my AP, but it's eight dice. So uh, the torches basically give you the fearsome rule. So this guy also has a fearsome rule, actually. When you begin your activation within three of him, you're gonna have to make bravery tests to see if you are mm -hmm. scared or not. Um, but the uh, the bird is not on a, a smaller base than the uh, the hobbits. It does make them very effective against the trees, though, because the trees are flammable. Having attack, looking for fours. One, two, three, four, five, six. Could do it. First defense die. One. Takes five, he's got one left. It's like crit, he loses an AP. So Shelby Shortwick's gonna go. He's yeah. gonna make a fearsome test first. Two is really scary. Pass on Snake Eyes. Oh, you're fine. Insane bravery. Eight dice to battle. Just gonna him. wall of them. Do it. Two, three. three. Okay. So I rolled a six, so he actually loses an AP from that as well. Yeah, because he gets a critical hit from his big wallop. And he passes two more, two more yeah. And then we're gonna wall of them again. Eight dice, you can do this, six hits. There you okay. go. Two, two four, four, six, eight. Eight. Two dice pick the lowest. And he loses two AP. Uh, just one. It's only it's one. Eight. It's one per hit, yeah. If A critical is so It fails. He's dead anyway. So the troll gets slain by Shelby Shortwick, although it ate his dog. Shelby, have any AP left? Nope. Only four. four. All right. He can move still. You can still lose base movement, yep. Yep. So you can move four. Three inch hobble along. He was four. He's wearing heavy armor? Uh, let's only do his leggings. Oh, Last one is leg rolls, yeah. Oh, okay. Shelby's all finished. All right. Well. I think we're gonna go with the war chief, and he's gonna throw his spear. Throw my spear 16, I'm gonna try and throw this fellow with the torch over here. Now because you're carrying a torch, I roll two pick the highest for aiming tests against you because you're well lit. You know, four, I got it. And then it is a five dice attack, eight dice attack, because it's a really big spear. Huh. Uh, one, two, three, four. Yeah. Dead. Dead. I'm just kidding. He's alive. <laughs> <laughs> got two left. Yeah, six HP takes four of it. And that's, I only do that once per round. So I'm going to take a walk now. And I will walk five over to here. I shall jump down. I'll use two AP. So that was uh, two AP to shoot. I'll use two more to walk or to do a, a jump down. And I fail. So I guess I got to walk, which will be half distance. It's only an inch and a half. Sorry, it's only two inches actually. It's going to go over difficult terrain. And then I'll leg it for the last one. And move five, two and a half, and come out of the train. The one hit point guy's gonna go. Smash that bird. Not Six the times. bird. Swap. One, two, three, four. Four hits. Okay, that's enough to kill him if he doesn't make at least one of these. He does. And then he doesn't. So he's got one left. He's done. <laughs> Peace out. <laughs> he's leaving behind the stones though. So the guy's gonna go. He's gonna move back three. Get the loot. And then he's got two AP. He's gonna leg it once. And go five. The best I could hope for. I'm gonna walk around here. Crossbow. Shoot this bird. No, no. Uh, let's roll hit. Yeah. You got him. Five dice. Five dice stack. Yep. Yeah. One. One. Oh, I just gotta make this save. Four Live. Five. We're good. Now I've got Toki Wartooth. He can go. I think he is gonna go. He's gonna head five because he's not wearing heavy armor to here. He's gonna spend two AP to jump. He does, and uh, just goes to the bottom here. Easy feet, and then he's gonna leg it one, and go three, to here, 
And he's gonna leg it two, and go three more. Two here. And he's all done. Back to you. Cool. And this little guy is gonna go. Walk over to this Mr. little gem. Mr. Axe and Shield. He'll try and pick, pick it up, it up. Two. two AP. Nope. Fails. Can't take it out of the ground. My last little woodling's gonna go, or sorry, my um, wood fiend. He's gonna move one to here. And then he's gonna leg it. And go two. Just head up behind Toki. I'm activated out, it's over to you. Minion. Yeah. <laughs> and he's gonna leg it. Reroll fragile. Yeah, goes four. Yeah. One more. Back to oh, the six. You, you agile it again, or is it once oh, per round? He's in the ground, he falls down. Yeah, it's agile's only once per round. Last little fellow, you want to try to pick that thing up? Oh, I'm going to break this bird's oh, legs. Oh, I see. <laughs> break the bird's legs, okay. Oh, I rolled a six, so I reroll. Uh, uh, is that the big guy, or is that him? Nope, little guy. Little critical guy allows him to reroll one failed hit. How many criticals? <laughs> a critical allows a player to reroll one. Yeah, so each hit. one. It'll be for each one. There we go. Six, seven, eight. <laughs> Ready for this? Good. One, two, six, five. three. Four. Ah, he's dead. <laughs> so close. And that's his old jam, but he's touching the uh, Arcanite for next turn. Mm -hmm. I think we're on round three, because I think that's everybody. All right, Dyson C goes first. I got a two. Two. Oh, again. Six. Is you. Because the boss is going to go first. The boss is going to go first and just group activate everybody. Yep. Here boss it comes. Is go. Walk onto this guy. Get him, Wilby. He's going to spend two, two AP. AP to pick that up. Crosses. He's got that Arcanite. And then he'll spend his third AP to leg it for one. Minus one, so he's zero. Zero, yep. And then his last AP is going to do a group activation. Yeah, so two models, or up to three models within 12. And activate together. Yes. We're going to go one, two, three. Okay. Actually, you're going to go one, two, and three over here. That makes sense. Um, and this little guy is going to pick that up for two. And then start Gets it. skadoodling. It's a crit, yep. And then the crossbow is going to go, moving up. He'll give an arrow to that big fella there. Okay. Not enough cover. I can need to be 50% on my base. So quick, 1d6. Quick. Nope. Misses. Last torch bear. He's going to shuffle, shuffle up again. He's going to one dice it. <laughs> yeah. Gets Smoke. it. And then he's going to scurry away. Two. Ah, oh, I need face plants. Agiles and falls down. He's one hit point lying on the ground. Well, I think we're going to go with the boss because he's done, he's done, and Shelby's done. And I think Shelby's, the boss is going to go. He's going to spend two AP, and he's going to chuck a spear into the um, torch bear there. And I rolled two pick the highest because you're carrying a torch. And I got you the crit. Uh, and then it is a six dice attack. Eight dice attack, that's right. If only I remembered the rules for this game. Uh, hitting on force. One, two, just two. Ha! Passes. Dies. Dies. Hard to dodge arrows when you're prone. Uh, and then I'm gonna make my base movements. And go four, because I'm wearing heavy wording. To here, I'm gonna leg it. And go three, which is enough. And then I'm gonna pick that guy up uh, with, I've used two, three, I have two left, so I'll use two. And knock it. Back to you. He'll give up an AP. And then he'll walk. Use base movement, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Because you can do either or. And then he'll uh, leg it. Going five, charging, going and getting the Arcanite. Killed. He just killed trolls. When trolls were That's dead. right, I was in the vicinity of a troll being killed. I'm brave. Uh, well, I think we're going to go with Toki. He's going to walk over here in his base movement. He's going to pick up the Arcanite for a 2 AP. He does. And then he's going to walk. Mm, we can leg it. And we leg it after the guy with the torch. And go three. Last day, people just do it again. And go four. That should make it into him. Last of the shield bros. He's going to do his. Oh, he's going to go hunt these guys down. Do it. Go four. Do it. Do it. Finish him. Well then, that little guy's gonna go, and he's gonna shoot thorn bullets at you, because apparently that's the thing that he can do for 2 AP. 2 AP, splinter! It's power five, uh, it's an eight inch range attack. So I have to hit you first, and I need a four plus, and I hit. 
And so it's a power five range attack on force. Uh, one, two, three, four, because I got a crit. And your shield lets you reroll one of these. So reroll. One. One. Two. 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 So five goes to three, and you got three points left. And then I'll use my base movement to run over here. All right, so last little guy, uh, he's just gonna move his three to within eight. So he's gonna go over to here. Man, just two AP to try and shoot you on a four. We miss. Round four. I should have um, remembered that when I move into base contact with somebody, I do get an extra AP. Um, but I won't take the attack because I, I it would be way way through the activation right now. It also helps the halflings get into combat because they have a two AP attack. If they leg it, they get a bonus AP and can use their last one to swing. Round four, potentially the last round of the game. All activation markers come off. And we'll see who's going first. You get a six. Ugh. Yes, you do. Here comes Wilby. Yep, he's gonna walk along. Going four. Make a leg it. Leg it. Come on, buddy. Leg it. Reroll. Reroll. There it is. He gets it. So he gets a free AP. Yeah. So the one AP is the leg. He just gets back, and he'll have four AP right now. Come for two. Eight dice. You no know, sixes. Ugh. Three. Three. All right. Let's see if I can block this. I do have armor one. And I get one, two, and then three from one. Roll again, though. Yeah, it's three total. Three stab to ignore my armor. Yep, five dice. No, I didn't get it. So one, two, two successes. Two successes. Okay, first one. Nope, but one armor, so it's one damage. I go to nine left. JP, you want to do it again? No, they're uh, they're going to group activate now. Ooh. So we'll just carry. So on. Shelby's done. And we're going to grab these three folks. Okay. Uh, you know, we're just going to grab these two folks, because they have to attack the same guy, and he doesn't want to fight this guy. That's fair. So we'll go with Little Torch Bro. He's going to six dice you. Looking for some buds. So three sixes, Oof. so three re-rolls. For another six. For a re-roll? I don't know. You can't re-roll, re-roll. So okay. the ones you already re-rolled, you can't re-roll. So just eight. Yeah, so eight, eight hits. Sweet. Uh, so I've got one armor. Seven damage. One armor. Seven damage, you got a two left. He's gonna walk away. And then he's gonna walk into melee. He's better in melee than he is at shooting. That's fair. So he's just gonna thump you as well. Give him the thumps, medium style. Four. Four? Oh, here we go. I need, to, need two. I need Three. two. No, two to live. Yeah. One. Two. So you're two. Uh, I got one hit left. point left. Ah, all right. Well, you damn near killed him. So he's gotta figure out what he wants to do right now. Because if I let you go again, you'll probably kill me. So I'm going to go with him. Yep. He is going to use his healing gem for an AP. And heal three. So he goes up to four. Oh, that's right. Sorry. It's a uh, it's a feat. It's not automatic, actually. I have to actually use AP for this. Uh, it's, not, it's not just heal three. It's make a feat. Well, I thought that was what you were doing. No, I that was the amount that I was going to heal. It's oh. like I have to make a feat to do this. I'm going to use two AP to actually get it off. Got it. And I do. So it's three AP. I won't reroll until I get more. So I go to four successes. Actually, it was actually only a feat to take it from somebody or to pass to somebody else. So I just used it without using any AP there. So we were just rereading it because it does mention easy feats, but it's only if you're to pass another character or use it on another character. So I still have two AP. Uh, I think I'm going to do an attack. We're going to hit the, the little baby crossbow halfling there with a flurry of blades. It's five dice attack. Uh, and I have... The ability if a crit is rolled, I can roll an additional d6, not a reroll. Not that it matters, I only get two successes. Yeah, he takes two damage. Okay, I'm down to four left. I'll use my base movement to walk five over to got two hit points left. And I'll use two AP mm, to summon a bird. Summon a bird. I don't. He's all done. Is he gonna go kill my boss? Yeah. All right, do it. Two AP to do a big swing. Six dice. Two, four, six. And you reroll two of those. Oh my god. Well, you didn't have any more misses, so you nine. got uh, nine. Two at least. I got two seven. less. So seven. Yeah. Got seven left. Oh, where she's going to go then? Uh, and he's going to also use a healing gem to heal D6. And get back six. Go to 13. So just one, one down, basically. I'm just going to mark one actually mm -hmm. on me. Uh, then he's going to use his stabbing ability. Which is a flurry of blows. No, a whirlwind. Power seven. Each crit allows an additional die to be rolled. And I can reroll ones because I have the dual blades or the dual attack ability. That's a good thing. So I hit a crit. Uh, and that's going to be three hits. And then no, this one here allows me to roll additional die. 
Which misses. So I get four total. Pass One, two. two. Keep going. Where you roll for shield. Three. three. Four total because you have uh, light armor. Uh, no, I've still got, that was only two AP. Okay. I've got three AP left. I'm going to spend two more to do it again. Might as well try. Uh, I can't reroll any of these, but I can reroll two extra dice. So that's going to be four, five, six, seven, eight total. Reroll. Ah, uh, you've done it once per round already. Oh, I see. It's not per attack. Yeah, it's per it's round. Good. So he's done. And last one. I'm going to try and summon the bird. Yes. I don't. And then Ophel's going to go take a walk for... Yeah, he's going for this one. Make the charge. Don't roll a one. You have Agile, though. You fool, falls down. There we go. He's good. And the free AP is to make a char or a stab. Yep. Six dice, big yeah, knocks. No one, two. two. Okay. okay. Fail. Take two. Got two left. I take two. I have four left, actually. Okay. All right. Well, I guess he goes and starts clawing you. Razor Brock Power. It's one AP for a four dice attack. Let's see if we can hit you. So hitting on fours. Uh, try five hits. Reroll, Reroll for, for the shield. shield. One. One. Two. 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 So two plus one for armor is three. So take two damage. And then I'll do it again. Stack. Uh, one, two, three total. Gotta make one. Makes two. Makes two. Takes another one. Makes three because he's... Oh, because it's three altogether. That's right. Because yeah, yeah. of his armor. I'm going to move away with my base move. Try and get... Ah, uh, you know what? We're going to go this way. Like that. Got my last guy. I don't think I'm within 11. But we'll try. We're going to go to there. And then am I within 8? I am not. So I won't bother legging it. Just going to stay there. Now it's 3-2. Does the game go on? Nope. And that's going to be game. So I'm going to score 1, 2, 3 VPs to your 1, 2. Uh, and the Wild Elves successfully take the Arcanite to Arcworld. So we're going to the game, uh, a little look at Arc World. Now there is much more to this coming apparently. The um, full second edition rulebook will contain campaign rules, even more expanded profiles. There's like wizards and magic. There's like an interesting mechanic where you like use a deck of cards and flip to 21 to cast spells. There's like a casting number. Um, but if you go to 21, the magic goes wild. So you have to like hit until you potentially go bust to try and like cast magic. And you use Arcanite to like power up your spells, cast additional spells, neat stuff like that. Um, those are all unlocked, I think, uh, for the crowdfund he's doing as like stretch goals, but they're in the rule book that's coming out, the big hardcover rule book. So anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Uh, very whimsical hand sculpted miniatures for Arc World. Uh, I'll put some links below so you can check out the rest of the stuff that he's got uh, coming up and available. Uh, and congratulations, Alex, on a, a very cool model range. You did all yourself. So we'll see you for more of this next time. Until then, I'm Ash. Have a great day. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you uh, want to support the channel, of course, like and subscribe and hit the little bell below to get notifications when I post future content. I do post stuff seven days a week. Uh, if you want to support the channel um, further, you can, of course, buy a t-shirt through Spreadshirts, um, buy a measuring gauge or objective markers from Death Ray Designs. Um, or, of course, most importantly, there is Patreon. Patreon is what makes all this possible. Uh, keeps the lights on, pays for the studio costs, pays for the equipment, model costs, and everything else. And most importantly, um, puts food in my kids' bellies and a roof over their heads. Uh, big thanks to everyone past, future who supported me. Uh, I do this stuff because of you guys, and of course, I will continue doing it as long as I can.